The way that we produce and consume dairy today is nothing like it's been for thousands of years and has resulted in nutritionally inferior foods. The cows are fed differently, the milk is treated differently, and we even eat it differently. The key to unlocking the potential of this amazing resource lies in the past. Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Schindler, food archeologist, chef, and director of the Eastern Shore Food Lab at Washington College. Consuming dairy as infants has been a part of our diets for almost 200 million years since our earliest mammal ancestors first appeared. In fact, the very definition of mammals refers to the presence of mammary glands that we and other animals use to produce the milk that feeds our young. Milk is an incredible food designed to nourish animals during one of the most nutritionally important times in their life, early development. As infants, the milk we drink from our mothers is completely alive and teeming with beneficial bacteria. And interestingly enough, it's already in the process of fermenting by the time that we drink it. If you've ever had a baby spit up on your shoulder and it looked like cottage cheese and smelled like provolone, that's because it is. As infants, we are literally transforming milk into cheese as we digest it. In fact, when we ferment milk outside of our bodies using traditional techniques, we are actually replicating natural processes that happened inside of our bodies when we were young. When it hits our digestive tract, it combines with a number of different enzymes, such as lactase, which helps digest lactose, or lipase, which helps break down the fat, and even chymosin or chymosin-like enzymes that help coagulate the milk. Coagulating the milk turns it into a thicker substance so that it remains longer in our digestive tracts. This allows it to chemically and physically break down more fully so that more nutrients can be absorbed and used by our bodies. When mammals get older and begin to eat solid foods, many lose the ability to produce the enzymes that they use to digest the milk. That's why so many humans experience some level of lactose intolerance as they get older. However, our ancestors figured out how to safely and effectively obtain nutrition from the milk of other animals, even as adults. The archeological record suggests that we started consuming dairy from other animals somewhere between eight and 10,000 years ago. Back then, it's believed that very few traditional groups would actually drink milk. Instead, they would ferment their dairy into a number of different foods, including clabber, kefir, yogurt, butter, and cheese. When our ancestors did this, they relied upon naturally occurring lactobacillus bacteria to replicate the processes that took place in their digestive tracts when they were infants. This type of fermentation chemically and physically transforms the dairy and results in a number of different health benefits. These include, number one, reducing or eliminating lactose, which many adults can't digest. Two, increasing the probiotic content. Three, increasing acidity and creating a safe environment that's hostile to pathogens. Four, pre-digesting the milk and making it easier to metabolize. Five, increasing the content of vitamins such as B and K2. And six, it also improves the milk's flavor, aroma, and texture. However, traditional dairy fermentation is both a labor and time-intensive process. It is difficult to scale and impossible to rush while still creating the same quality and nutritional benefits. As populations in urban areas grew in the 19th century, drastically increasing the demand for milk, Many things about the way the milk was produced, stored, transported, and even consumed began to change. For example, swill milk was created by pairing distilleries with dairies so that the leftover grains from the distilling process could be used to feed the cows. These cows were fed diets they were not designed to eat, lived in crowded, filthy conditions, became sick, and produced tainted milk. To make it taste and look better, all sorts of things were added to the milk, from molasses to animal brains. Milk production, distribution, and consumption eventually got to the point that it was making people sick and killing them, especially infants. In order to protect consumers, a relatively new invention, pasteurization, was used to kill off pathogens by boiling the milk. On the surface, pasteurization sounds like a good idea, especially when compared to transforming an entire industry and the way in which most of the country obtained, prepared, and consumed its milk. Simply boiling the milk is much easier, more efficient, and cheaper. But it's not that simple. 
And at the end of the process, it is degrading vitamins and killing the probiotics in milk. In addition to pasteurization, we have adopted the practice of homogenizing our milk, which prevents the fat from separating and cream rising to the top. Homogenization involves physically forcing the cream through microscopic holes in metal plates, causing the fat molecules to explode and break apart. This results in smaller fat globules that don't separate from the milk. Homogenization serves no safety or nutritional purpose whatsoever. The only thing that it does is relieves us modern milk drinkers from having to shake the gallon of milk in the morning before we pour it on our cereal. The dairy aisle in our grocery stores today contain hundreds of different products, everything that is, except for the milk that our ancestors consumed. Most of our milk today comes from huge dairy farms, then it's pasteurized and separated into different parts, such as fat, skim milk, and milk solids. Then, the milk is artificially recombined to meet minimum standards and maximize profits. Most modern fermented dairy products are made from pasteurized milk and require the addition of laboratory-created bacterial colonies to kickstart the fermentation. Almost all of these fermented offerings have been adulterated and contain unnatural additives. Processed cheese, processed cheese food, and processed cheese products do not deliver the same safety and nutrition that traditionally fermented cheese does. In fact, many of the cheeses in our grocery store labeled mozzarella are made using a shortcut method of artificially introducing acid and they never go through a fermentation process at all. This is not the same milk that our ancestors consumed and we're not consuming it in the same way. And those two things make all the difference. We need to change things for our own health, the health of our animals, and the health of the planet. There are a number of different things that we can do. We need to reconnect with our food and take back control by supporting small local dairy farmers whenever possible. Purchase minimally processed milk. For example, swap out homogenized milk for non-homogenized cream line versions. If you're buying pasteurized milk, select pasteurized over ultra pasteurized. Learn to ferment your milk and make it into a number of different traditional products, such as kefir, clabber, yogurt, butter, and cheese in your home kitchen. And if you don't do those things yourself, support the people that do by purchasing from small local producers that use high quality milk and traditional methods. It is impossible to transform any industry on a global scale overnight, but that's okay. Powerful change begins with the decisions that we make on how we feed our own families.